Hey folks, Joe Dickinson here. I'm an audio consultant at Vintage King Pro Audio, and I'm sitting in front of the fantastic new console from AMS Neve, 8424. Joining me is Joe Heaton over in England. He's a product specialist with AMS Neve, who literally wrote the manual on this console, and I can't think of anyone better to discuss this with. How are you doing, Joe? Hi, Joe. I'm good, thanks. Always good to meet uh, another Joe. So this is the 8424. It's Neve's brand new console. Uh, I'm currently in, in our new studio. We built this studio to, to demo this and you guys have one in front of you. Um, so yeah, this is uh, 24 channels. We have 16 to the left of the master section and eight to the right. Um, we have onboard 1073s, 500 slots, uh, instrument DIs, and then a dual input channel strip that you can decide to customize however you want. If you want to use it as recording inputs, um, separate from the DAW returns or connect synths or anything like that. It's got a lot of connective uh, capability. I mean, from a top-down view, it, it looks not as uh, demanding as most console, like most large format consoles at least, um, but it definitely seems to have a feature set that matches kind of a large format versus a small format. Um, so you've managed to squeeze it in a very small frame. Um, transformers, obviously Neve is very much known for that kind of thing. How many transformers are in this console? Right, okay. So, yeah, well, this console we use, uh, we're using voltage mixing on the mix bus, and that's the, the, the type of mixing that, that was used on the vintage Neve consoles, such as the 8058, 8068. So, we, we're driving voltage through Mariner transformers on the mix bus. We have uh, Mariner transformers on the Q bus as well, and on the AFL bus. Uh, so, there are, there are six over here on the master section not to mention the transformers that are included with the onboard 1073s as well. Um, the rest of the console uses virtual Earthbus technology, the same that's found on our large format 88R console and on the Genesis. So we've got a combination of, of modern, clean sounding uh, professional audio and uh, a vintage sounding Neve mix bus on this console. So we're going to get to the point now in the conversation where we discuss the preamps. There are two preamps loaded in this. They sit just here to the top right-hand side of the console by the meters. Um, what was the decision behind going for two preamps instead of kind of loading the whole desk throughout? Right, well, yeah, this is a different take on, on console design, um, obviously including all 1073s across all, all 24 channels would uh, increase the price of the console dramatically. And there are a lot of producers, artists, and small studios who are working in uh, many modern mediums, such as uh, hip hop, electronic music, singer songwriters, and they only ever require one or two preamps for their work. They're building up um, in the box sessions with virtual instruments. So we have a large channel count that uh, accommodates those big mix sessions, and then uh, two high quality 1073s that can be used for recording vocal ov overdubs or uh, any instruments that they want to record. Um, and then, of course, we, ha we can expand this console. So not only do we have the, the two 1073s that are, that are in here, a lot of these smaller studios already have their own racks of outboard pre's, like their favorite preamps that they're, they're used to using. Because this is a dual input console, uh, we have the DAW returns that are completely separate from the recording inputs. And these were designed to take the output of external preamps so you can customize your recording chain however you want. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, I think a lot of people already have a, a load of preamps, EQs, compressors and stuff. Again, I don't see any EQs on here. So it seems like this has been built so that it can slide into pretty much anyone's studio, hook up pretty quickly, um, and they have, you know, 80 series Neve summing in front of them with hands-on stuff, and then all their preamps still keep the same kind of sonic vibe there. So I think that's a really smart choice and a really interesting way to kind of save some, save some cash on stuff they already have and bring in a really incredible mixer into their kind of studio. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, a lot of people nowadays are working primarily in the box. E e EQ has come a massive, uh, massive way within the box uh, processing. So everyone's familiar with that, uh, that way of working. They have the favorite EQ plugins that they're using and then a few choice outboard units that they may want to put on a vocal or a particular track when they're mixing or recording. 
And this allows you to add the extra features that you don't get with an in-the-box workflow, but you're still maintaining that speed of, of work that you're used to. Um, of course, if you're using in-the-box plugins, it's all automatically recalled on a session-by-session -session basis. And then uh, any of your outboard can be connected to this console uh, and added wherever you want. I think in terms of scalability, what are we talking in terms of um, mix down channels? How many channels do I have at my fingertips to mix down through the 8424? Well, we have 24 on the faders, but we wanted to make this really expandable. So um, if you're running a larger session and you need more than the 24, we have a, a button called 48 mix. And that actually allows you to bring in an additional 24 returns from the DAW. So at the push of a button, it activates input C, which is an, an extra D-type connection at the back of the console. All of your stereo cues now become your faders and pan control for those extra inputs. The solo system is linked um, so that you have a full solo system for all 48. And then that cue bus is rooted into the, uh, into the stereo mix as well. So you have a full dual layer control over all those inputs. Which is incredible for a frame size that's, that's this big. It's 48 channels uh, mixed down. Plus, I see we've also got reverb returns, so they could be coming from other things. It's it's a huge amount of routing for such a small console. I mean, so congratulations on that, first of all. It's not overwhelming. It's very easy to kind of get around. I mean, I came in here maybe two or three hours ago, and I had a session up pretty quickly. And that's a huge, huge endorsement for a console of this sort of size. So, yeah, congratulations on that, for sure. So, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so that's uh, the kind of routing of the console. Um, I do see the top of this is um, encoders. And you did just come out with that fancy new OPX that's 81073s. Is there a secret there? <laughs> uh, yes, well, we actually uh, we actually developed the, the OPX and the 8424 in tandem. Um, this console has been a few years in the making now uh, with our R&D team. Um, and we, as we mentioned, you know, we have the two onboard 1073s. And uh, you know, I said that you can install this console and use all of your uh, existing preamps, so you can kind of customize how, how many recording inputs you want. But then there are going to be some people who just want to add 1073s to this, or they want to buy this console and add more recording inputs straight away. So we developed the OPX and the 8424 together, and they're designed so that you can output from the OPX into input B on any eight channels that you wish. And then the F and C mode at the top, that's uh, that's coming as a, a future firmware update that will be in the next couple of months. And that will allow you to control the gains of an attached, uh, of, of a connected OPX unit. So as I'm cycling through here, I get to F and C and I can set the gain and then I jump back to my input direct out and it kind of sets the encoder. So that's kind of cool. And I imagine that ties in very nicely with the recall system. It does, yeah. I mean, I mean, having it that way means that you can you can drive the OPX and then you can use the trim to to dial it back so that you can get that harmonic distortion that the 1073 is famous for. But because it's uh, digitally controlled trim, as you mentioned, it's all fully automatic. So that can be stored in the console on a session by session basis and then uh, then recalled whenever you want to start that session back up again. So now we touched on the recall. Um how much of this console can be recalled? All of the console can be fully recalled. So all of the, the switches, uh, as, as we mentioned, both trim levels per channel, direct out, uh, FNC, um, all of those are automatic, as well as all of the switches, which are digitally controlled. So your insert on-offs, your aux on-offs, um, all of your routing is all fully automatic, so that's instant. And then we have a, an onboard recall program that allows you to manually recall any pot and fader position. And to, to perform a full recall on the console, it takes less than two minutes. Yeah, I'm just going to cycle through as we're talking about it, which is kind of fun. So hit load. I just changed some faders here. I know it's on, on save three. So if I go to OK, and it's going loading, counting itself down. And it's going to tick through each channel as it goes. Yeah, so we, we have two layers to the recall. So uh, as it's counting down, it, all of the automatic settings that I just mentioned will fire back into place immediately. And then it asks you if you want to start the manual recall. And that can be really useful if you just want to. So if, if you're finishing a session at the end of the night, uh, you can just press save. 
and then you're not going to move any of the faders then anyway until the next day so when you come in the next day you just load that and you don't need to run the recall so it's just automatically uh, all of your routing is back where it needs to be and as this is going around now it's telling me where to change things it says 12 fader channel 12 fader move it up matched and it moves on to the next and then yep. that's all i changed around i think yeah it's it's pretty oh the pan that's quick it's yep. a really smart system and i really like this small um kind of scribble strip thing here it was kind of daunting seeing the manual and kind of thinking is that going to be enough but it's quick oh stereo yep. two it is. I mean, we, we wanted to include a recall system that was internal, so you don't have to worry about anything else. It just works on its own, standalone, and um, that was just quick to use. It's accurate, it's fast, um, and, you know, it, it enables us to position these analog faders on a session-by-session -session basis. Um, that's one of the main things you want at the, end of this, at the end of the session on an analog board. Being able to recall everything exactly as it was is, is a really key feature and something unique that we wanted to add to this, this small format console. In fact, you, you don't have to do a, a fully automatic scan as well. Um, when you're doing the recall procedure, if you just hit any of the solos, you can manually recall individual settings. So if you just had a vocalist uh, that wanted to come back the next day and you had a particular routing set up on that channel, um, you can just manually recall that one channel settings so you don't have to recall the entire board. So this is the front of the console. Let's discuss the back panel now. Um, what do the connections look like on the back and how easy is it to integrate with or without a patch bay? Uh, well, really easy, actually. W what we have on the rear of the console is uh, we have D-type connections for interface outputs and your uh, your direct uh, direct outputs from the console. So. Most interfaces will already have those D-type connections. It's really easy to just connect your audio system that way. But everything else, such as your line inputs and your insert send and returns, are on uh, TRS connectors, so that you can just plug your favorite outboard in uh, via a simple connection at the back, or you can connect a synth directly via those line inputs, and it's ready to go. I mean, you can use a patch bay with this, of course. You can use breakout cables to get into a patch bay. Uh, but we wanted to make this really simple for people to connect what they want without one as well. That's very cool. So you could drop this into any studio pretty much, use current cabling that they already have, um, and they're pretty much good to go, which is kind of a, an incredible way to cut costs down because, as we all know, when you buy a console, the next big purchase is cabling, and that's not a cheap kind of thing to add on, so that's great. Um, speaking of the back panel, these 1073s, how much... Um, kind of flexibility is there for routing on the back panel? Is it all handled on the console itself? Where can I put it? Do I lose inputs? Kind of tell me about them. Right, well, the 1073s, they have their own input and output on the rear. So mic, line inputs, and, uh, and then an output as well via XLR. So that allows you to patch that uh, into any channel that you wish, into input B, or you can uh, hard patch it into the, in the audio interface if you want. Um, but we also have a smart routing feature. So if you push the, the trim control on each of those 1073s, that then routes them to channel 17 and 18, respectively, uh, without any cable patching. That's just automatically goes into those channels in input B. And then that can take advantage of the direct outs, the sends, uh, any inserts as well. Um, so that allows you to record very easily at the push of a button and you're back into the DAW. Uh, but as well, we have the 500 slots underneath. Um, and the 500 slots, you can see, if you see on the console, uh, there's a 501, 502 button on those 1073s. So pushing that activates whatever you have in that 500 slot as an insert into that 1073. So you can, you, you can add a compressor to your vocal before it gets to your DAW via the direct out. That's unbelievable. So you can kind of cascade it out onto the console and also hit these 500 slots. So let's, for example, say I'm hitting it th to the channel 17 and 18 and I have a 500 slot. Is that going to route from the 1073 to the 500 slot and then onto the console? Yes. Yeah, it does in that order. Yeah, that's very cool. So I could load uh, 1073 EQ in here and cascade yeah. onto the console, having all the drive and coolness of a 1073 through the EQ. And then I'm on the desk. Oh, good to go. Yep, exactly. Yeah, uh, taking advantage of any additional inserts on that channel, as well. So if you wanted to add an extra, uh, an extra bit of processing there, and then direct out into your DAW. So 
you can use anything that you have in those slots that way and then when you're ready to mix you can assign that back over to a mix compressor as well so quite a bit of flexibility with the smart routing options we have for sure and that seems to be the same story with these di's underneath right Yes, so uh, the, the DIs, although they're underneath the 1073s, they're, they're completely separate DIs. So you can use them independently while you're recording uh, a vocal with the microphone on one of the 1073s. You can connect a guitar up at the same time. And you'll notice that the, the level pot routes those over to 19 and 20. So they can be smart routed over and they also have the same 500 option as well. So you can decide to, to add a compressor or an EQ into that recording chain too. So we've touched a little bit now on recording. Um, what's the kind of flexibility for routing here with talkback and things like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's one of the things we wanted to add to this uh, this console because uh, this talkback and uh, having easy to uh, connect cue mixes, things like that, there, it's a quite awkward thing to interface from, from an in-the-box setup. You usually have to sacrifice a, uh, an interface output and then uh, an input for if you wanted a, a talkback microphone. So we have a built-in talkback system here, um, very easy to use at the top. That can be routed over to the queues as well to communicate. We actually have a return talkback system as well, so you can get some communication from the live room too. And that's something that's often missed on, on, on consoles of this kind of size, but it's definitely a nice addition because otherwise you're losing you know, two mic preamps for return communication. And the amount of times I've set up a session and realized that the drummer is still talking through his hi-hat mic, it gets a bit... <laughs> it's a bit difficult so it's a really nice addition mm, yeah of course and it's those it's those features that we, we wanted to uh, give to the uh, the in the box hybrid user you know and it's, it can be an awkward thing to, to set up in most small studios without a, a large format console in fact the the return talkback on on this has uh, three different modes you can you can use it as a traditional listen mic um uh, so anyone in the live room can communicate with the control room. We have a producer mic option as well, so you can have a second uh, talkback mic that feeds into the queue system. So if you've got a producer or a manager in your, your control room, it's really easy to, to communicate. And uh, because it has its own gain, phantom power, and compressor circuit, it can be hard patched as an additional input as well. So it's quite a lot of flexibility with what you can do with it. So we've talked about the top-down view, we've talked about the back panel. I do notice some kind of cool things under, under the bolster just here. What's, what have we got under this bolster? Right, so underneath here we have the two DIs. So we wanted to put them under the armrest so that you can uh, just connect a guitar straight away uh, without having to go around the back. Again, you know, it, it makes it simple to connect to without a patch bay. So those two are under there. And we also have the two headphone out outputs as well. So we've got the engineer headphones and then the, uh, the second headphone output, which has its own uh, source and level selector as well. So that, that means you can sit next to the console surface with an artist and record them uh, straight away you know they've got their own uh, headphone mix they've got the microphone the, their own di connected you don't have to you don't have to be in a separate room to be able to connect to this console and record really easily for sure and there's there seems to be a bunch of different options here for where the source is for that headphone to send like a mix mm -hmm. external the monitor set, monitor in the control room and a queue and two two or three on the aux sends that's kind of a lot of flexibility and options there it is, yeah, yeah, and um, it's th having the aux two and three on there. That that's our second um, cue send. So we got the stereo cue, which is your your dedicated uh, cue send for when you're recording. Um, but if if you have more performers who need their own, then aux two and three will double up as a, a second cue send, and talkback is routed to those just the same way as this the stereo uh, stereo cue as well. Um, and then of course feeding external signals into that headphone mix. Uh, that's really useful if they're bringing in reference tracks. In fact, the extra uh, the extra input underneath the armrest is the IMON. And what that is, is it's a 3.5 millimeter mini jack that will connect uh, like a, a phone or an iPod or anything to, so that an artist can bring their own, their own little mix that they want to sound like or uh, any lyrics that they have recorded on a phone. And they can plug that in, feed that into their headphones, very easily without having to use a DI box or, or anything like that.
very smart to have things just at like kind of arm's reach, very quick to set up, which of course is our job. We have to stay out the way of the creative process and get things done as fast as possible. So that's really right. smart design. Um, we haven't discussed the groups here, and we have four mono groups with kind of a cool EQ section, and I have heard it already. Um, and it doesn't, it's not a subtle thing, it's definitely a, a very present EQ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we wanted to. Yeah, we wanted to put a bit of processing on on this master section here to kind of sweeten up some uh, some stem mixes. So we have a two band EQ on each group, and then we also have the same two band EQ on on the master fader as well. So it's uh, shelving EQ at ten kilohertz on the top, and then two twenty on on the low. So it allows you to really sweeten up a mix that way, and that can be activated as well. So you, you can quickly take it out of circuit and pop it in when you need it and is that plus or minus 12 db uh yes it is yes yeah, plus or minus 12 on the groups and it's uh plus minus 15 on uh, on the stereo mix on, on the high frequency so you get a little bit more bit more of a boost cut on there so just look at these groups here it also looks like we can route directly on the console straight to the 500 series solution and we can also have an insert point on the back yes yeah so each of these groups has its own inserts uh, switchable insert that can be activated and uh, it has the smart routing button so you can activate the 500 series uh, units as inserts as well so you can have 500 and an external insert too um, and we also have the same on, on the stereo mix as well so we have a stereo insert and the 500 routing as well um, each of these groups has its own direct out as well that can be pre or, or post fade uh, and in fact those inserts can be pre or post fade as well so you can use the the faders to really drive um, a, an outboard compressor for example and for people who mix in stems like composers film score people that's huge to have that much that kind of flexibility for stem mixing mm -hmm. yeah yeah it is and and we have a, we have a function on the console called group pan so what you can do with that is uh, with it deactivated and any of my pan positions to the stereo mix are not followed in the groups. That means that I can I can work on a stereo mix. And then if I just want to send a mono stem or a group of mono stems out to the groups, uh, they will they will feed out without any of that pan position. And then if I want to create a stereo stem, I just activate group pan. And then uh, any any group routing is followed by that as well. So stereo stems or mono stems at the push of a button. It seems like this console has been designed for uh, kind of any eventuality. There were things that you might not know you need now, but then when you need it in a session, you can remember and go, oh, I can do it this way, and this is going to save me this. I don't need to use this input or this send. I have the flexibility now. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the main thing with this console is it's really, really simple to use. It's, uh, I mean, you said it early on when we, when we first were discussing the console that you spent three hours on it and it's just really straightforward. Nothing was tripping you up when you were using it. And that's one of the things we really wanted to get across. We wanted this to be simple and sound great. But we also added some, some like large format features in here, such as we have an inline mix mode. Uh, we have some parallel processing, routing paths, uh, and 48 mix mode as well. Uh, and those are additional features that some uh, large format engineers will be really familiar with. Um, so there are layers to how you want to use it. So we have 24 channels laid out here, um, and I can see one, two, three auxiliary sends and a stereo Q send as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we have three, three aux sends. It can be pre-post, um, and then we have the stereo Q send, and that can be used in a number of ways. So as a traditional Q send, or it can re return additional inputs as well, or be used for inline mixing mode. Um, and then... We also have two stereo reverb returns, so that's really good for getting your signals from your outboard effects units back into the console without having to sacrifice channels. Each of these reverb returns has its own cue send as well, so you can send that to performers. Uh, it can be isolated from the solo system, and it even has its own routing uh, buttons underneath. So you can send those to the groups instead of the main mix. And that, that will allow you to print um, your outboard effects as tracks into the DAW. So you, if you have a lot of outboard effects units, more than uh, the, two, uh, the two stereo reverb returns allows you, then you can uh, print those back as stems uh, into, the, into the DAW.
And that's huge, being able to send signal to an outboard piece of, uh, say, a reverb or delay or something, and not having to have it come back and eat up four channels here. It's right there in the center section. That's that's a huge deal for a small format console. Yeah, it is. And again, it, it goes back to the, the console being, you know, it majors on connectivity. Um, like you said, a lot of smaller format consoles don't have that feature. And uh really it allows you to return 52 signals instead of 48 if you if you ever run out of 48 you can use the reverb returns as extra line inputs as well so you mentioned briefly some top tier features this console can operate as an inline console right yes it can so what we do with that we we have a mode called inline mode and that allows you to bring back your daw return on the channel's stereo cue with your Q control becoming your small fader, so your monitor return, uh, and it's on the pan control as well. So that allows me to, if I was recording a, a guitar and I wanted to take advantage of some um, in-the-box processing, such as a modeling plugin, I can plug in to the DI, send through the direct out, and then monitor that back on the same channel strip really conveniently by using this, uh, this stereo Q return, and then I can monitor that in-the-box processing while I'm recording, and I can also monitor latency free just from from the uh, the recording input as well so there's there's quite a lot of flexibility there with what you can do which again is huge because a typical way of routing that if you didn't have it in line would be to come in leave the console and direct out and come back on another channel that would be the only way to do that so to have it all again in a nice easy format directly on the same channel that it's being processed on is huge yeah, it is. And we, we expanded on that a little bit further by adding a feature called Q to group. And what that does is if you're using any of your individual channels in inline mode, instead of sending the monitor return to your Q mix, which wouldn't be ideal if you were using recording inputs on other channels, you can send that down to the groups here. And then that gives you a second master fader that controls your monitor returns, takes them away from the Q bus, which can still be used for performers. Uh, for their headphone mixes and then you have second master fader with its own inserts its own uh, direct outputs as well um, really kind of separates those monitor returns from from any other system so you, you, there's a lot of flexibility with the way you can you can use this well that that helps for stem mixing that could be parallel processing that could be anything so the flexibility of this console is staggering the amount of ways you can set it up and like I said before, you might not know you need it now, but in a session when you run out of, you know, some kind of bus where you need to send some another mix to somewhere, you can do that with this console. So one of the biggest and most important things when you're bringing tracks out of the DAW onto a console or surface of any kind is the ability to run parallel processing for drum compression, for anything like that. Can you walk me through any of the kind of cool quirks that this console can do? Yeah, well, I mentioned some of the, the, the Q to group function and uh, the ability to bring in extra channels up here. Uh, of course, you could use the groups for parallel processing really easily uh, with all the routing features that you have. But if you want to do that on an individual channel basis, what you can do is you can bring the DAW return in on input A to one of the channels. And you can also bring it in to the Q as well. So you end up with having two positions with the same DAW return. I can then activate an insert on that channel, either on the, the channel send or on the Q send with the input C button, process that one, and then leave the dry signal going out to the mix bus as well. So I can have parallel processing on an individual channel basis. Again, without having to break out into other channels. It seems like you've just kind of thought about it in a really logical way instead of kind of being an afterthought. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's just so much routing capability with this console that I I'm sure we're going to learn even more ways of doing it once uh, once all the producers in the world get their hands on this and then give us some, some feedback. I'm, sh I'm sure there are many ways we haven't even thought of that can be taken advantage of. So to recap, the 8424 is a console that can slide straight into your studio and be fully operational very, very quickly. The amount of uh, variations of connectivity with this console and um, routing options is staggering and we're going to find many different ways of working with this board in many different studios that's very very exciting you can harness the power of the pre's you already own and have that running directly into this console meaning you don't have to double down on features that you don't necessarily need at this time 
In addition to that, the encoders at the top can run and operate the OPX also from AMS Neve. So if you need it, you can also add those 1073s to this console to create a behemoth of a desk. The console's recall system means that you can get back up to speed with any mix you're working on, with up to 99 stored presets on the console, with future updates coming down the line that mean you can offload those to the computer and, and recall them at any time. So with the 8424, you're not just getting a console that gets you out the box and working hands-on with your audio. The scalability and the expandability of this console is staggering. And we haven't even mentioned here that the mix bus on this console is the 80 series mix bus that we know and love world over. So you're getting the 80 series mix bus in this console at a very, very good price point. So thanks for watching our video on the fantastic new 8424 from AMS Neve. If you'd like to learn anything else about this console, feel free to reach out to your audio consultant or visit us online at vintageking.com. Thank you so much for your assistance today, Joe. It's been a pleasure. No problem at all, Joe. It's always a pleasure to show off our latest, uh, latest consoles. And uh, I love being in front of this thing. It sounds amazing. Yeah, check out vintageking.com. Fantastic. And this one's mine now, right? <laughs> of course. Good. <laughs>